Welcome traders. My name is Siddharth and today I'll teach you how to build a stock portfolio or a market portfolio. It's been a long time since I've uploaded a video. I've been extremely busy and I do apologize to my subscribers and I'm glad that they're patient and are still subscribed to the channel. I think I might be able to upload uh, videos uh, here forth. Uh, hope you enjoy this video. Let's get started. So a stock portfolio or a market portfolio is a combination of different assets such as equity stocks, bonds, gold funds, mutual funds, etc. Now the combination is derived by calculating your risk appetite. So let's say you are in your mid 20s to your mid 30s. Your portfolio should ideally be more inclined towards risky assets such as stocks and if let's say you are in your mid 50s to mid 60s your assets should be inclined towards less risky assets such as bond and gold now an optimum portfolio is designed by including a perfect mixture of these assets together here we include both high risk low risk as well as medium risk assets together to achieve the highest possible return while safeguarding your finances modeling the equity stock now when we talk about equity stock we uh, specify stocks in three segments the large cap the mid cap and the small cap now to achieve a low in risk uh, equity model uh, we need to allocate 50 percent of our finances in uh, large capital stocks the reason why we uh, allocate 50 percent of our finances in large capital stocks is because they are low in volatility. Now, when I say volatility, what I basically mean is, let's say the uh, uh, benchmark index, which is Nifty 50, is giving a return of 15% per annum. So what happens is the stocks in the large cap section, which are included in the Nifty 50, will try to mirror the benchmark return, which is 15%, like I said earlier. So since they are low in volatility, your return might be one standard deviation uh, above or lower uh, the benchmark return, right? Now moving on to the mid cap, we invest 30% in mid cap is because this is again comparatively uh, a higher in risk in comparison to large cap. But again, when the risk is higher, the reward is also higher. So with mid cap, you can expect a higher substantial return but the downside is also high similarly with small cap the return is even higher risk is also higher and downside is also higher so only 20 percent in the small cap section but i would like to tell you warren buffet has this uh, uh, principle uh, where he invests uh, 70 percent or more in mid cap sections because he believes that the large cap has already outperformed the market or are evaluating the true picture of the value of the share whereas the small cap is a bit risky or on the riskier side because it's still in the growing phase and anything can happen in the initial phase of a company or uh, it's not uh, uh, rather very safe as an investment when it comes to small cap whereas mid cap lies in the very sweet spot of having uh, been there in the market for a long time along with having sust uh, like a sustained growth performance because india itself is a developing country and those sections uh, which uh, were overlooked earlier are developing now so mid cap is an ideal spot for investment and that is why we invest 30% in the low risk category Whereas in the medium risk category, we invest 40% of our capital in the mid cap section because we are here to achieve a higher return, keeping in mind that uh, since India is a developing country and the economy is booming, certain sectors will do well because of that. So keeping that in mind, we invest 40% of our capital in the mid cap section. 30% of a capital in the large cap section and 30% in the small cap section more emphasis being on the mid cap Okay, so now we talk about the segregation of equity stocks 
like I told you earlier, there are three uh, separate uh, segments, the large cap, the mid cap and the small cap. Now, if we want to choose stocks from each sector or each segment, we choose uh, the index. Now, for index, we refer to Nifty 50 for the large cap because it has the top 50 uh, best performing stocks of uh, the Indian stock market and it contains a list of that. So we choose stocks from there for the large cap. For the mid cap, we choose stocks from the Nifty mid 100, which is a list of top 100 mid cap companies trading in India. And then for small cap, we uh, generally refer to the Nifty uh, small 100 index, again, which contains the top 100 companies in India, which uh, are trading in the small cap space, right? Okay, so if you can see on the right hand side, you will see that the yellow is the large cap section. Uh, in comparison to all the other two, you will see that uh, the return on the large cap is low, but it's again uh, secure uh, comparatively. So basically when the risk is low, the return is also low. When the risk gets higher, the reward also gets higher. So with the mid cap, the, the risk is higher, the reward is also higher. With the large cap, the risk is again uh, even more higher and the reward is also more higher if it works out. All right. So now we talk about the portfolios. The first portfolio is for a individual in the mid 20s to mid 30s bracket. Now for that kind of person, it is recommended that they uh, take a certain amount of risk and for that it is uh, necessary that they invest 60% of their uh, finances in the equity stock segment, 10% in the bonds, 15% in gold and gold ETFs and 15% in cash and liquid funds. 60% in stocks is uh, how you achieve a good return in the equity market. Or in the market itself 10% uh, in bond is uh, done so that you can protect your assets to a certain degree in case the equity segment uh, falls back 15% uh, uh, in gold this is an important part because most people do not consider gold as an investment uh, in digital term but uh, gold can be bought in ETF forms ETF basically means exchange traded funds and you can buy the value of uh, gold in NAVs, NAV, which is net asset value, right? So 15% in gold, uh, we do an investment because if let's say equity stock uh, or the equity stocks fall because of a bad market performance, the value of gold will increase. Both are inversely related. So when the equity rises, gold falls, and when gold rises, equity falls but it is more, mostly related to the equity market, right? And then we keep 15% of our cash aside. Now, this 15% is uh, kept so that you can uh, do swing trading techniques with this amount, this cash flow which is available to you. Uh, you generally invest and keep them in liquid funds uh, or else you just keep them in the trading account and you take swing positions like uh, positions for a week span or a month span to achieve at least 10 to 15 percent out of those positions right now we move on to portfolio 2 which is a medium risk pro uh, portfolio now this is a portfolio for the mid 40s to mid 50s bracket now these people should uh, uh, rather uh, like rather than uh, thinking about wealth creation they need to think about wealth wealth generation and the best way to do that is investing 50% in equity which will allow them to beat the inflation rate by a standard amount and uh, then uh, gain a substantial or not, not a substantial but standard amount of rate after that. 20% uh, in gold to uh, secure their fund in case the market collapses. 20% in bond. This is again uh, you're investing in government bonds. When I refer to bonds you can invest in government bonds, you can invest to invest in company bonds you do that through the market itself to uh, safeguard your finances and 10% in cash 
uh, this is uh, done so that you can keep a certain amount aside in case the equity stock falls you can use uh, utilize the 10% of cash available to you to buy more shares at a lower price and the last portfolio a low risk portfolio is a portfolio uh, for a person in the mid 50s and above bracket now for people in this bracket age uh, their first and the primary uh, goal should be wealth preservation because people uh, in this age generally need to keep their finances steady and earn a decent return uh, every month or every year such that they can meet the daily expenses so for that reason 40 percent of their finances should be in the bond section because it's more it's safer than equity uh, 30 percent in equity 20 percent in gold to safeguard uh, the equity uh, inflow and 10 percent in cash and liquid funds so that they can average uh, the shares in case uh, the market falls right now this is an example of how I choose the equity sections, the gold sections and bond sections. I'll just uh, uh, skip through the sides uh, so that you can uh, quickly go through it. This is how I choose it. Just go, uh, read that. And then I'll move on to the sample portfolio. I have created a portfolio uh, which I generally use, uh, uh, keeping in mind the the past one year to the current situation I have chosen the high growth sector the mid growth sector and the slow growth sector and how I allocate in these individual sectors so I invest 30 like if let's say I invest in a high risk portfolio which comprises 60% of my funds being there out of those 60% of the funds then again I allocate my funds in three different segments the high growth sector the mid growth sector and the slow growth sector I have chosen 30,000 for the high growth sector, 15,000 each for the mid growth sector and the slow growth sector. So this is my model portfolio. Just have a look at it. Uh, I will never suggest you to copy this portfolio uh, uh, randomly and invest in the same scripts. This is just a video for educational purposes and I have made the amounts of this portfolio for today's price uh, I have invested in these shares in the like I have been invested in this shares for more than one year so the prices are different in my portfolio in my holdings and will be different in your holdings if you uh, purchase uh, buy it after due diligence and uh, just go through it pause the video if you want to check it properly and then again in the second part uh, uh, like we invest 15% in gold I choose Reliance gold ETFs I have invested 5,000 there and I've uh, invested a uh, 10,000 rupees uh, in the DSP world gold fund because in 2015 when the stock market collapsed in China the world gold fund doubled its value so an investment of 10,000 in 2000 uh, like the beginning of 2015 would give you uh, roughly uh, I think 19,000 because it gained 98% uh, the entire year in by the end by the beginning of 2016 so that is why I invest in gold for the bond I always choose government securities uh, bonds I have a, a holding in the principal government securities fund of 10,000 and I have kept aside a 15,000 in cash instead of having cash you can always opt for liquid bees uh, ETF those are thousand rupees uh, valued nav the price do not change you buy a thousand rupees itself by the end of 30 days you will get an interest you, uh, the interest is given to you in the form of a nav so let's say you've invested one lakh in the fund and the interest for that particular month was let's say about uh, two percent so you would get two navs in the uh, demat account credited to you all right thank you for watching this video if you have any concerns please write down uh, in the comment section thank you